Okay, so this is the summary. This slide is the summary of what we learned from the first Anwakam. This should get very simply, as I was starting talking about, you see the that is the that is the source. This is the reflection. And if the water is impure and if the water is uh, not still, then that source will not be getting reflection, imperfection. For that source to reflect within us completely, perfectly, then what has to happen? The body has to be pure, the mind has to be pure, the being has to be still. This is the essence of spirituality. Any religion, this is the essence of it. Now what I did, you will see 1.1 means first mantra. How many mantras? 15 mantras. And you see each one of them, what is the essence and meaning of each mantra is given in this slide. So the first mantra is invoking awareness, thought, mind, action. Awareness, Manyu, thought, uh, issue, mind, dhanu, action, bahu, atma. What is that? Oh, now you understood what atma is. <laughs> now you understood what atma is. Atma is awareness in thought, mind, and action. That is atma. Not Atma means some divine soul, light, the spirit uh, hanging uh, somewhere there. Not like that. When you have awareness of your thought, awareness in mind and in action, your Atma is fully expressing itself. And as you see, thought, mind, instincts, purity of form, disengaging from negativity, purity of words, that is at the body level, at the emotional level, why fear when I am here? Adhya vocha dadhyvakta Namo asavyastamro arunavatava brussumangalaha Namo astu sahasrakshaya All these things now, each one. Now you read the mantra and you will know the meaning. You don't have to write it down. All these slides are available. You can download, print and study whatever you want. Where is the sister that was asking what is the meaning of the words and mantras? Everything is in these slides. Word by word meaning of each of Rudram is presented. And if you want to listen more about my voice and don't get tired of it, you can go to Sai Ati Rudram YouTube channel. And there are more than 300 videos just on Rudram itself. Sai Ati Rudram, S A I A T I R U D R A M, that is the YouTube channel. I'm not doing any marketing. There is no fees or no money collected whatsoever for sharing any of this because it belongs to Bhagwan. And with Bhagwan, everything, including education, medical, is free. Because it is free, we don't pay any attention to it. That is unfortunately the human mind. When you pay something, then you are serious about it. Why? Because you are spending money. I told this to Bhagwan once, Swami, don't give this stuff free to people, you know. They don't, they think that it has no value. Therefore, they don't pay any attention to you. Charge them money. <laughs> then they will pay attention. If you pay for the swimming class of your child, you make sure you go 10 minutes before the swimming class starts and you make sure that they, they swim. If they don't swim, you throw them into the pool. I am paying you money, you have to bloody swim right now. But Swami is giving all this incredible knowledge and preparing us to swim in the ocean of life. And yet, we don't know how to give our gratitude to Him. How many of us truly feel inspired to dedicate themselves to Bhagavan's mission? in love and in service, not just us. There are hundreds of thousands of his own students that don't have gratitude for what he has given to them. If only those hundreds of thousands of students of Swami get into Swami's work today, the entire world will be transformed. Jesus has 13 apostles. 
Bhagwan did not create tattin of his divine souls to go inspire the whole world. And if those students get it to work, I assure you, world will be transformed. But they fall into this thing called Maya, Samsara. But when you focus on this, you will see S S B Satya Sai Baba shines in you. S S B Shaker S Bodhipalli. <laughs> That is the essence of the slide. The top one is capital SSB. You see the small one is small SSB. But that brings in emotions, clarity in stillness, be an instrument, transcend perceptions, hurt never, help ever. The one who you really are, be still and know thyself. This is the essence of the first Anuvagam. Now we get into the second work. Well, we're done with now with the first work. What else you want more than this? Huh? Is there anything more to learn? Love. Okay. <laughs> what we go into next one? The essence of the first anuvakam of Rudram. Then you get into the second and the third and the fourth anuvakam. See here. If you go into this slide, you will see how the each, each of them is broken and the literal meaning of it, the inner meaning of it and link to the YouTube video that explains all of it. And, uh, am I going reverse? Yes. So, with that, we conclude the first Anuvakam and then we get into the second Anuvakam. Now when that reflection is born from the source in perfection, as I explained to you, Vishweshwaraya Mahadevaya Trembagaya Tripurantagaya Trikagnikalaya Kalagnirudraya Neelakanthaya Mrutyunjayaya Sarveshwaraya Sadashivaya Sriman Mahadevaya Namaha And the meaning given inside all those words is nothing to do with the Hindu context. You, you can see that the being of the entire universe, the supreme amongst divine beings, the 381 vision beyond, beyond the physical, the dissolver of the three worlds as in body, mind and ego, the three energies, attributes and beyond, the source and force of energy in time, blue neck unaffected by negativity, conqueror of death, being and enabler of all beings, ever positive, greatest God that bestows a good mind. Those are the meanings. Sri Man Mahadevaya Namaha. As we go next, we will see the next Anuvakam. Before we get into this, we all have to understand two words in the word spiritual. If you combine spirit and ritual, it becomes a spiritual. Simply doing ritual without understanding the spirit behind it, is useless. It's process. Simply being in spirit without connecting to the ritual is also useless because it doesn't expand. When you do a ritual together like a yajna, you do it together. If you simply say, I am the spirit, I am the body, I am God, I am God, you sing like that, what's the point? So brothers and sisters, please know, this is where there is a dichotomy here. Lot of people say, Bhagawan is not about ritual, he is all about spirit, therefore I am not going to participate in ritual, this Veda Mantras, everything is all ritual, we don't want to do anything about it. That point of view is incorrect. It is also incorrect to say that ritual is the only thing we have to do. That's what temples, synagogues, mosques, everybody does without understanding the spirit behind it. That is also valueless. Bhagavan's emphasis is spiritual. That means there is spirit in the ritual and there is a ritual with the spirit. That is what is called yajna. Now, I have, you know, I, I don't want to bother you with all of this. So when we go through this, we are... Uh, this is the ritual part I am explaining. How each of these mantras is used in the ritual. The 15 mantras are used as part of ritual in worshipping the lingam. 
So, which is beyond the scope of this, let's go to the next one. So, the next three Anuvaka, second, third and the fourth, bring about three important aspects about this source. And the three properties of this source are Ami, Presence, Ami, Potence, Omniscience. Those are the three aspects about the properties of this source that is reflected within you. Therefore, what happens is, in the next three Anuvaka, these Anuvaka explain, once you have this purity and the stillness and the source is completely reflecting in you, how they manifest from within you, you begin to realize these beautiful properties that are within you of the infinite that are finitized within you as the reflection. This is very, very beautiful. And so what happens then? You are re recognizing these properties in the source and the reflection. Yes, there are two things now. There is the source, there is the reflection. And these properties are getting manifested in the reflection from the source. So, omnipresence, which is called Sarvantaryami. Ami Shiyans Sarvajnyatva. These are Sanskrit words for the same transliterated there. Omnipotent is Sarveshwaratva. Saishwara is omnipotence. Vitvahe is omniscience, omnipresence, Satya Devayati Mahi. So now from this mantras are words, now you will see single lines. They are called the single lines are called as the yajus. The first, first the, that is technically what we are calling as a yajus. That means what? Namo hiranya bahave senanye dishanja pataye namo So there are 13 mantras in this second Anuvakam. <laughs> there are 13 mantras from Namo Hiranya Bhagave to Krishna Vitae Dhavate Satvanam Pataye Namaha. What these 13 mantras are invoking, you will notice there are two Namahas in each of the mantras. Namo Hiranya Bhagave Senhanye Dishan Chapataye Namo. That is one line. So the next, like that, there are 13 lines. If you were to look at it, if you count it, you will find 13 lines. And these 13 lines, each line starts with Namaha, ends with Namaha. So the first Namaha is for the source, the second Namaha is for the reflection. So that is called Ubhaya Namaskara. This you are doing salutations on both sides. You recognize that this property is present in the source and the same property is reflected now in perfection, in the reflection. 
So, what is this thing about omniscience, omnipresence and omnipotence? That means uh, the source uh, has these properties in every particle, in every speck of space, in every unit of time, in every nook and corner and in every being of creation. Yes, look at that, how powerful that is. God is not just present within only humans. This omnipresence is manifested in every particle, in every object, in any dimension of space, time, objectivity, and in every particle of creation it is expressed. Not only that, in what we perceive as good and bad, beautiful and ugly, right and wrong, positive and negative, high and low, conceivable and inconceivable, mortal and immortal, existence and non-existence. Just reading that is enough. <laughs> huh? This is not what I am saying. This is what the mantras that we are going to study will actually let us know how God is therefore manifested as omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent. So that is the second, third, and the fourth anvaka associated with this mantras. Now, in the second anvaka, as I already mentioned, there are thirteen yajus. Hiranyabahave senanye dishanchapataye namaha. Hiranyabahave means golden shoulders the chief of armies that rules all directions. That is the literal meaning. The inner meaning is Hiranya. Hiranya means translation in English will be gold. And in Telugu it will be called Bangaru. Who uses that word? Ah, so he is calling all of us Bangaru. Bangaru. Why he is calling us gold? Huh? Why he is calling us gold? What that Hiranya Bahave means? When you have a body that is useful, Hita, and beautiful, Ramaniya, that is called Hiranya Bahave. When your shoulders are engaged in action of service, extending selfless service to all the world in every direction, then you truly become Senanye Dishanchapataya Namaha. You truly become a spiritual leader leading an army. Pun <laughs> Leading an army. What is the army? Atirudra <laughs> Leading the army is Atirudra Mahayagya. That is a spiritual leader. You, you will now take that in love and service to all nook and corner of the world. Now, as you go through these mantras, I won't bore you with every, each and every one of them. These aspects represent eight different manifestations of God as Bhimaya Namaha, Ugraya Namaha, Rudraya Namaha, Bhavaya Namaha, Sharvaya Namaha. These are all the words used to God in extolling as with all these attributes. So the literal meaning as you go through this is fine, but ultimately they boil down to eight life energies that are manifested within us. What are the eight life energies manifested within us? Five of them you already know. There are five things that are common to all of us. Five things common to all of us. What are they? What are the five things we all use? Come on, Tara, don't go to sleep. Okay. Huh? No, no, no. Five say everybody has their own sense. Okay. I'm talking about five things we all use together. All of us are dependent on five things. Ah, now, what are the five elements? Earth, water, fire, wind, wind, breathing, wind, and space. Who do these belong to? Nobody? Huh. But we get to use them, no? Does the earth belong to you? No. no. But we get to use it. Does the water belong to you? No. no water shedding also. <laughs> <laughs> what 
is happening in South Africa. No, there is a, there is fire. Uh, I already mentioned to you these five things. How they are manifested? In, did I already mention to you? No, I didn't mention. It was yesterday, Satsang. Okay, sorry. So, what is present outside us, the earth, is present also inside us. You know how? Yes. 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 Your hair, your skin, your cartilage, your bones—all of these are made of earth element. And your saliva, the fluids in the body, the water element. What is the fire element? Just now you had this fire in the belly. Aham Vaishwanaro Bhutva, Praninan Dehavasritaha. I am present as Vaishwanara, the fire god within all the beings, and therefore that hunger, the thirst, the drive, the passion, all of that in us is the fire element. And our ability to breathe is the wind element. What is the space element within us? Our ability to remember, to store. You store all your pictures, everything encoded and, de and encrypted in iCloud space. <laughs> that is the space. Everything is stored in space. Brothers and sisters, are you following with me? Are you with me so far? No, don't doze off. If the person next to you is sleeping, wake them up. <laughs> Okay, after Bani Chow, it is very hard to keep you all awake. Oh, okay, so all these five elements that are present inside are also present outside. The same five are manifested inside and outside. That's why it is called Prapancha. Pancha means five. Pra means manifestation. Manifestation of the five within, without is the five is the aspect about integration of the inside with the outside. But if you abuse earth, trust me, you will get all diseases related to skin, bone, nerves, everything. Hundred percent. If you abuse water, you will get the diseases related to that. If you abuse fire, it means overeat. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Yeah. Overeating is a disease. So if you don't use these resources that are given outside with carefulness and with proper, properly knowing that they don't belong to you, if you take something that doesn't belong to you, who are you called? Ah, there you go. You understand? So, if you take something that doesn't belong to you, you are a thief. Therefore, you have no right to abuse these, they don't belong to you. They don't belong to you. Don't abuse those. And not only that, so when you go through these mantras, what you will actually understand that the presence of these eight life energies are what these mantras are talking about. And those eight, we only covered five, no? How many are left? Three. three. What are those three? Common to all of us. Mind, intellect and ego. <laughs> Mind, intellect and ego. How many have we come through? Eight. How many mantras are until the last one? Namasuta ya hantya ya bananam pataye namaha. So, what's the point of this? The eight life energies is the omnipresence of Bhagwan. And those eight life energies are inside us, outside of us. And before we go through this, all this. Oh, I want to go to. The, so, there you go. The five outside, the five inside, when you put them together, what happened? Namaste. That is the meaning of the word Namaha. Earth, water, fire, wind, space, capital SSB and small SSB, bones, fluids, hunger, breath, memory that I just walked through with you. And therefore, First one integrating the divine outside manifested with the divine inside 
manifested. When you put them together, then 5 plus 5 is equal to? 5 plus 5 is equal to? 5 plus 5 is equal to? 10 now. 5 plus 5 is equal to? 1. I am showing it to you. It is 1. 5 plus 5 became 1. There is 1 in the 5 inside. There is 1 in the 5 outside. You recognize unity in diversity. That is the essence of Sri Rudram and the Vedas. 